Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia news line and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi returns to India after over 50 engagements travels across three nations. Ready for negotiations, says Imran Khan amid PTI leaders' exodus. And Bangladesh says committed to free and fair elections after US announces visa curbs. And now for all the details. Concluding his three-nation visit to Japan, Papua New Guinea and Australia, Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in New Delhi early on Thursday, where he received a warm welcome from BJP workers and his supporters. Modi said today India has reached a position where the world wants to know what India is thinking and wants India to find solutions for its problems. Foreign Minister Jay Shankar also recalled the remarks by Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea who termed PM Modi as the leader of the Global South and the Australian Prime Minister calling him the boss. Modi said today he confidently looks into the eyes of the people across the world because India has a stable government with an absolute majority. भारत कुछ रास्ता निकाले भारत उस रास्ते पर हमारे साथ चले भारत क्या सोच रहा है हमें बताएं दुनिया के हर और कोने से यही आवाज आ रही है and amid the high profile string of departures from the opposition PTI the party supremo and pakistan's ex pm imran khan has said that he is ready to talk with state authorities to seek a way out of the impasse. Khan in a video address said that his party will form two committees to hold talks with the government and if they are able to satisfy the committee that Khan's withdrawal from politics will benefit the country, he will leave politics. If this committee says that Imran Khan will be better than Imran Khan and Pakistan will be better than Imran Khan and you have a solution, मैं फिर से कहता हूं कि इस मुल्क की खातिर मैं छोड़ देता हूं मैं पीछे हट जाता हूं अगर आप यह कमेटी को समझा दें कि मेरे बगैर मुल्क बेहतर चलेगा चले मैं मुल्क की खातिर यह भी छोड़ने के लिए तैयार हूं लोकल मीडिया रिपोर्ट सजेस्ट अराउंड 30 पीटीआई लीडर्स इंक्लूडिंग खान्स क्लोज एट फवाद चौधरी हैव लेफ्ट द पार्टी एंड मोर लाइकली टू फॉलो सूट द स्लीव डिपार्चर्स हैज कम एज पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट हैज थ्रेटेंड टू बैन द पीटीआई and an international aid agency in Afghanistan hopes to have an interim arrangement within days to allow its Afghan female staff to return to work in Kandahar province. Norwegian Refugee Council Secretary General Jan Eagland met key Taliban leaders and said the de facto authorities were also willing to find interim solutions that would restart work with women for women to meet the growing crisis in a country with over 28 million people in urgent need of aid. The Taliban has enforced a ban on Afghan women working for the UN and other aid agencies since last year. The group has argued that the exclusion of Afghanistan from the financial system, cuts in development aid and the non-recognition of their government have caused the ongoing economic and humanitarian crisis. Well, in a recent flare-up between Bangladesh and the United States, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Wednesday announced a new visa policy targeting the elections in the South Asian nation. Blinken said Washington will restrict visas for Bangladeshis who undermine the democratic election process in their home country. The restrictions could apply to anyone belonging to the government, judiciary, law enforcement agencies or the opposition. Bangladesh's junior foreign minister Shahriyar Alam in response said it does not bother his country. Talking to news agency UNB, Alam said PM Sheikh Hasina's government is committed to holding a free and fair election. Hasina has also in the past attacked the US claiming that they want a regime change in her country. And crisis-stricken Sri Lanka should be able to conclude newly launched debt restructuring talks by September or November at the latest, President Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Thursday, adding that the negotiations had made remarkable progress. The comment came as he met his Japanese counterpart, Fumio Shida, in Tokyo. 
Japan, France and India last month unveiled a common platform for talks among bilateral creditors to coordinate restructuring of the island nation's debt. Sri Lanka owes $7.1 billion to its creditors, including China and India. It secured a $2.9 billion IMF bailout in March, but must set up a debt restructuring framework to carry forward the program. The IMF also said earlier this week that Sri Lanka's macroeconomic situation was improving. And the Nevar community in Nepal on Thursday marked the annual festival of Siti Naka, the traditional water day on which they clean the ancient sources of water, including wells and ponds. Take a look. Members of the Nevar community in Nepal on Thursday celebrated the Siti Naka festival, also called the Water Day, during which they clean the traditional sources of water, such as wells and ponds, and also worship them. The annual festival raises awareness about importance of water in life and the need to conserve it. On this day, devotees worship Kumar Kartike, the son of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. It is believed taking a bath in water bodies on the occasion keeps diseases away. On this day, the farmers also avoid working in the fields. The cultural festival falls on the sixth day of the waxing moon in the month of Jate, according to the lunar calendar. It also marks the beginning of the monsoon season. And hundreds of Tibetans living in exile in India's hill town of Dharamshala gathered at a monastery to offer prayers for their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, on Wednesday. The crowd of Buddhist devotees, which also included foreign nationals, chanted prayers in adoration for the Nobel Peace Laureate. The ceremony was held on the request of the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana. The Dalai Lama, who fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959, has worked for decades to draw global support for linguistic and cultural autonomy in his remote, mountainous homeland situated between India and China. He requested His Holiness to accept Long Life Puja, and so His Holiness very kindly accepted, and that's what we offered just now, this morning. What is, the, what is the need of this puja and what is the significance of this puja? I think the main thing is requesting His Holiness to, to live long, to have a very long life and to continue teaching the Dharma. That's the main thing. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. It's the same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.